personal favorite amongst you know, the ads that you've done? Amongst anything that I do, my films or scenes in my film or my commercial, I like it best when um, I felt powerless. I don't like it when I see people, directors or filmmakers, who think that you know I gotta control everything. Because you gotta control over nothing. You know what I mean? Because the Tao decides everything. And so, um, so I like, I love the ones like Tan Ho Ming where I had no control. You know, I just point the camera, I just asked the first question that came to mind, and he answered, and, blah, 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 and within 10 minutes the shoot was over, and I, I'm going, bigger powers were at hand, and I was modest enough to step back and just be part of the energy. Just the ones where it's, it's very contrived, the first one you saw with the mother and daughter is my least favorite because I was controlling everything, thinking I'm so incredible as I'm not. <laughs> so Tan Hong Ming was actually he was a natural. Yes. There was no rehearsing. No script. Oh. Wow. wow. There's a French um, artist who said art is a collaboration between God uh, and the artist. And the less the artist does, the better. Uh, which means all we are supposed to do is observe. And uh, you know, I, I absolutely believe in, in the hand of God in everything. Uh, my favorite book of all time is the Quran. My second favorite book is the Tao Te Ching. And uh, these two books says to you that um, you think you're amazing creating all these things, but actually these things were put before you uh, for a reason, and whether you want to take it or not. So with him, it's I just saw as many kids as I could, and he kept tagging along, he kept hanging on to my baju kurung, <laughs> and telling nonsense jokes, like, auntie, auntie, I'm a vegetarian. I said, you're six, you can't be vegetarian. I'm kidding. <laughs> so it's uh, of course, I had to, to take him on. And he was in love with this girl. I had lunch with him recently, and I said, um, he arrived first, then she came in this whole neck white thing, and she's bronze, you see. And she arrived, she went, he went, wow. And, uh, and then when, when, when she sat down, they, they, they didn't face each other. And I said, don't you love her anymore? She's my number one enemy now. Oh. And I said, why? There's another boy who likes her in school. And when I greet her in the morning, she doesn't even bother to look at me. Aww. <laughs> so she's, she's a bit of a slut. <laughs> but it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. That's right. Yeah, I just go, look, I don't care what you say about me. I'm just going to do my work the best I can. And I was so enjoying it that all the clients that those non-Malay uh, writers and art directors had that they didn't want, that they hated, I said, let me have a go. Um, and I think setbacks like that uh, push you ahead. Right. Um, you know, the Buddhist saying, the thicker the mud, the more beautiful the lotus. Uh -huh. I, I'm very grateful for the mud. I'm very grateful for Ronnie Cole, the then deputy managing director who said to my creative director, Victor, I don't want her to work. Number one, she's Malay. And you know them. Number two, she's a woman, and I saw her working on the floor. She was writing copy like that. And for a break, she played guitar. So this woman and smoked cigarette. So Victor says, I hired her. You gotta, you know, I got, I pay, I'm paying her, so I gotta give her work. So God is great. I mean, people have got to stop thinking beyond. Have got to start thinking beyond their skin. I don't even know if I'll succeed or if I'll fail, but gotta do it. My mom said to me before I started to work. Two things. Number one, don't fear people who are above you. Don't look down on people who are below you. Uh, number two, she says, whatever you're doing, do your best. Have fun. Mm -hmm. Give it passion. Doesn't matter what it is. If you're washing the toilet, do that, and you have the cleanest toilet. Take pride in it. Doesn't matter what you're doing. I said, can I be the best as a housewife? She said, shut up. I give you. I said, you give me your best. She <laughs> <laughs> double standard, <laughs> Your Tan Hong Ming um, advert actually received some flag because of the, what he said, like asking her out on a date. Like, um, yeah, yeah, how, yeah, yeah. What, what did you feel about that? How did you feel about that when they said well, that? Well, Tan Hong Ming came out last year, and by then I had made movies for five years, and I've had people complain. So, out of every hundred people who say, I really felt that, you will get two or three. I don't know, they woke up and they were out of the bed, they were abused by an uncle when they were kids, who knows, right? They, they will have a problem with, with, with it. Even my last film, Moksin, mm -hmm. about uh, first love, 
Before it was even released, it's a yes man on my phone. It must be encouraging kids to have sex before they even saw the film. So, it's good. Give me thick mud. Hopefully I can become a, a splendid lotus one day. Did any of your other advertisements other than the the, the one in the train and Tan Hong actually receive that much flag? Of course. I um, one of the first commercial I did for Petronas was for Independence Day. And you know, 60% of the population is Malay, 30% is Chinese, and about 10% Indians. And then for marketing people think they're very smart, oh we're very mathematical. When I talk to Chinese Chinese housewives, must show Chinese housewives. Hello, I saw finding me more what I cry and I laugh, I fish, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I figured I'm going to show Independence Day through the eyes of the minority race. Petronas allowed me to do it. And, uh, and I remember the TV station, there was this Malay lady, said, oh, it's a Chinese racist, Malay racist, and they said, everybody's racist. <laughs> People can't think we are this kid. They haven't said, this, she saw the commission and she went, this country is majority Malay, why are you show Indian? So I ignored that. I said, I'm gonna if you say it again, I'm going to report it in the newspapers. <laughs> so she said, oh yeah, so, so we ran it. And uh, think about it, right? It's a commercial, there were some people complaining, it's a commercial that it's about minor showing minority. So mathematically speaking, brand consultants will tell you 70%, no, 90% of the population will not get it. Who that dark thing on the bicycle, you know, but they got it. Um, and then people who would, did not live in 1957 will not get it, if you listen to Ben Consultancy. But the papers, again, were inundated with letters from teenagers of all races saying, wow, you know, now I, I kind of feel about Independence Day, which I never felt before, because I never did see it. Mm -hmm. So you can show... Has anyone seen Sepet? Sepet, you know, I deliberately showed... Um, if you go to research companies, marketing, brand consultants, they tell you, advertising agencies, I don't that they will tell, they will tell you, um, oh, we're talking to teenagers, they like rap now, let's show rap music, they like to have their jeans halfway down their butt and they can see the crack, so everybody in the commercial must have butt crack. Um, you know, it's just stereotype people, so when I make sepet, I figured, no, you teenagers are human beings, they fall in love, they're afraid of exams, it's the same as they're afraid of an interview. They love their parents and they hate them at the same time, you know, and that ha happens to everybody. Even if you're a child or a teenager or an adult, you're the same, basically, I believe. And the, the first time you fall in love, it's the same as I believe. The first time Adam saw Eve, wow, quite hot, Do you know what I mean? So I think it's the same, you know, I want to do something. So, so, so I ignore all these things. I think we just think humanity.